such a good, good day to be together in the name of Jesus. This is a great day to be together. We are coming off of some of the greatest momentum that God has ever blessed our church family with. And I just want to brag on God for a second. Can I do that? In November, we had the greatest November in our church's history. Typically, November is a, a low month, but in November, we had one of the greatest months ever with 219 people giving their lives to Jesus between both campuses. That's awesome. And now we're coming off of that momentum, getting ready for Christmas Eve. And in the middle of all that, we just did at both campuses. Yesterday, we did our big serve day. It's our end of the year where we go out and we give over 3,500 meals away. We give toys away to kids. But more importantly, between both campuses, yesterday at the big outreach, we had over 400 people give their life to Jesus. Come on now. That's amazing. So proud of our dream team. Both of our campus pastors are both care. Just amazing what God is doing. And all this momentum is leading us into Christmas Eve. If you've never been to one of our Christmas Eve celebrations, you should definitely come bring some friends, bring some family. It's relevant. It's fun. It is current. It is awesome. But most importantly, it's powerful. And God moves in a unique and special way. And we're believing for just hundreds upon hundreds of more people to give their life to Christ in a beautiful, beautiful way. And that's just going to lead us into being even stronger and better in 2020. Because how you leave is how you enter. And we don't want to we don't want to end up in 2019 staggering because then you walk into 2020 staggering. Not just as a church. I'm talking to you personally now. If you didn't meet your goals, okay, get over it. Make more goals. Do you follow what I'm saying? Don't let the enemy beat you up. Don't let your conscience get the best of you and make you feel like a failure, like you didn't get it. Because all of that stuff starts to tie in to why December is such a tough month for so many people when it's designed to be the most joyous month of the year. It's intended to be the greatest celebratory month that we have all year long, and instead it's such a struggle for so many people. And we looked at this last week and talked about it a little bit. There's a lot of companies that start to cut back at the end of the year to save overhead and margin, and people start losing their jobs. A lot of times we look at our goals that we set in January, and we realize we've fallen short on some and sometimes on many. And then that guilt and that shame and that condemnation starts to come in. And it feels like, man, just another year that I didn't meet the goals I set. And then there's those that have lost loved ones recently and sometimes not even so recently. But you get around the holiday season and you start to remember how much you miss them and how much you love them. And all of these factors along with other things begin to combine together and they create a force that the enemy is using to try to bring you down in the month where God is trying to lift you up. November, December is the leading month of suicide of all 12 months in America when it should be the greatest month to celebrate. And the enemy is at work there. So our entire goal in the new series that we just started last week carrying in to the Sunday right before Christmas Eve, our goal is to just simply be a mouthpiece for God to encourage you and to show you how much God is really with you. Because he is with you every step of the way. He's with you everywhere that you go. He's with you in every facet of your life. He's with you in every imaginable way. And who is he? God. That's what we looked at last week. God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We call it the Trinity. But the Father's not the Son, the Son's not the Spirit, the Spirit's not the Father, and so on. So they are three separate entities, three separate personalities, but all together they make up God. And what I heard God speak to me for this series was, was to break down the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Scripture and show to our family how He is with you in every facet of His being. The Father is with you, the Son is with you, the Spirit is with you is with you in every way, shape, and form. So we're going to jump in today. Last week, we looked at the Son. Today, we're going to look at the Father, a loving God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the head of the Trinity. He's the big guy in the sky. 
He's the one that calls the shots. Jesus said, I can only do what I have already seen my father do. Jesus said that it was his father who sent him into the earth. And that his father will send his spirit after him. So we know that God the father is truly that. He is a father. The enemy works extra overtime to try to convince you that he's a bad dad. That he's a mean dad. He could even be abusive at times. He tries to paint this picture through religion and through preconcepted ideas that we have in society that God is like the Greek false god Zeus where he's seated on this lofty throne in the clouds with lightning bolts in a bucket next to him. And he's just waiting on you to mess up so he can zap the snot out of you. And those preconceived ideas, they begin to set into our psyche and into the way that we think and into the way that we feel. And then the devil capitalizes on that. He twists it up even extra, gets you all twisted up, and he gets you to start to believe just because you're not perfect, the father's no longer interested in you. He's disappointed in you. He's angry at you. But I want to show you today through Scripture what God is really doing for you. How God the Father is really working on your behalf. What he's doing when you're sleeping. What he's doing when you're awake. What he's doing when you're going through tough times. What he's doing when you're going through good times. Because there's times where you feel so exposed. There's times where you feel like you're vulnerable and, and you're wondering like, God, are you, are you there? You're going through a tough time, a tough season. But I'm here to tell you today, the first point is this, that God, no matter what you're going through, no matter how you feel, the facts are God has you covered. And when I read this scripture in Zephaniah to you, I want you to picture it and bring it to life in your mind. The Lord your God is in your, everybody say it together. I got a lot of mitts coming out of my mouth today. I've been enjoying this beautiful thing in Texas we call cedar fever with a little dash of bronchitis on top of it all week. You know, if I could say mitts with some unction, I need you to help me and say it with even more, okay? So the Lord your God is in your midst. You know what? Oh, that's so good. Woo, you gave me, woo. He's in your midst. What does that mean? He's among you. He's in you. He's around you. He's above you. He's got you covered. Look at this now. A mighty one who will save. You know, one translation says, a mighty warrior who saves. The Lord's your God. So, so start to picture it. He's in your midst, but don't just picture it like some floating mist. I want you to picture that mighty warrior. That mighty warrior who has never lost a single battle in his entire existence. And he, he is in your midst. And the reason why he's in your midst is to save you. Not just save your soul, but to save you from trouble, to save you from calamity, to save you from the traps the enemy has set before you. Now look what else he'll do for you. He will rejoice over you with gladness. Can you picture? No, no, get the old Zeus model out of your head and picture a warrior God who is literally standing in your midst, hovering over you, not to condemn you, not to judge you, not to strike you down, but to begin to rejoice over you with gladness, to cheer you on, to give you a standing ovation. Then it says he will calm you. He will calm all your fears with his love. Now picture that, this warrior God who's been rejoicing over you and all of a sudden you start to feel a little bit of fear about tomorrow or worry about yesterday or you start to fear are you going to lose your job or are you going to lose your loved one or you start to have these and God just begins to calm you and just begins to blanket you with his love. And then this last part, man this makes me want to jump up out of my skin. It says he will rejoice over you with loud singing. What does that look like? I've got this massive, mighty warrior God 
who is my father. He's my daddy. He is the one that cares for me. He's the one that gives me my identity. He's the one that affirms me in my faith. He is dancing over me while he is singing at the top of his lungs. He is rejoicing with everything that he has. He is calming all of my fears. This is the God that we serve. This is the Father who's redeemed your soul. He's got you covered. I, I, I saw this in such a unique way when I was preparing for this message. This was like two weeks ago that I was on this scripture and all of a sudden, Man, I just began to weep at the scripture, realizing. And then I started looking it up at all kinds of different translations. And no matter what translation, I went back to the Hebrew. No matter what translation I read it in, it all meant the same. That there is a mighty God who is a warrior who is standing above me. And I'm, he's not expecting me to be singing over him with a loud voice. He is singing over my life with a loud voice. He is rejoicing over me. He is loving me. He is calming me. He is chasing the fears out of my life. This is who he is. But the devil creeps in. The father of lies himself. And the first thing he does is say, okay, yeah, yeah. All right. That crazy shouting preacher at church was right. God's, he's with you when you're good. He's with you when you do it just right. But remember so-and-so? When they walked away from God, this is what happened to them. Oh, do you remember that one time when you took, do you, do you remember that one time when you, you, you slid back a little bit and God left you? That's not true. That's never been true. That's just another lie. God says he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. So what happens then? Because we've all experienced it. We've all experienced it where all of a sudden something blindsides you in life. Maybe it's a sickness or a disease that your body gets afflicted with or it's somebody you love that betrays you or speaks ill of you. Maybe it's a divorce you've been through. Maybe it's maybe it's a child that goes their separate ways and your heart feels like it's broken in pieces or a boyfriend or girlfriend they break up with you. Whatever it is that you've been through, whatever it is that you're going through, all of a sudden, something hits you out of nowhere. And you're a little punch drunk. You're stunned for a moment. And in that moment of confusion, in that moment where you don't have your feet fully set underneath you, the devil comes in and begins to work. And the next thing you know, you stop reading your Bible every day. And then it turns from days into weeks and weeks into months. Then all of a sudden you stop going to church. And you ain't been in weeks or months. And then all of a sudden you start ta- you stop talking to God like you used to talk to him every day at least in some way. And now you find your prayer life is, is sporadic and you're using your prayers only as like a 911 system. And all of a sudden you feel like, God, where are you? But the truth is, he's with you just as he's always been. It's just you've come out of tune. You're not in the right channel. So you're not receiving and hearing from him because of your choices, because of your distractions. But the devil will make you think that God's left you. He'll make you think that no matter what, you've done too much. You've gone too far this time. Oh, buddy, there ain't no coming back from this one. But let me show you number two. God is with you everywhere. The psalmist said, if I ascend to the highest of the mountains, God is there with me. If I choose to make my bed in hell, God lies there with me. Joshua 1.9, God says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged. This is my command. Be strong. Be courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. And then he's about to tell us why we should be strong and courageous and why we don't have to be afraid or discouraged. He says, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
Wherever you go, whatever you do, he is with you. Wherever you go in your mind, he is with you. Oh, when you go to that place of anger, he's still there with you. When you go to that place of lust, he's still there with you. When you go to that place of, of frustration or abandonment, you, that feeling, that sense of, of losing your, 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 your wit or your soul in this life, your footing in this life, he's still there with you. Because he is faithful. Even when we are unfaithful. He remains faithful. Because he can't deny himself. But the devil's good at what he does. And he gets you thinking that it's God that left you when the truth is it's really just you being distracted from God. You haven't left him. You still love him. You still desire him. You just got distracted. So how do you fix it? Well, get undistracted. The only way to turn it around is literally just to turn it around. The devil makes it so complicated. Your mind makes it so, oh, how can I go back to church? They're going to they're gonna think I'm just a, the biggest sinner in the world. They're probably not even going to recognize my face. They're not going to go, blah, 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 blah. Nobody will treat you like that, not here. People come to me in the lobby all the time and say, I'm sorry I haven't been here. I say, hey, hey, you know what matters now? As you're here today. That's all that matters. That's what matters to me. That's what matters to God. Quit falling into that trap, that condemnation, that guilt, that shame, that pain of your mistakes of your past. As soon as you make it right with God, it's right. And the wrong is gone. It's long gone. Well, man, I haven't read that. You guys do the one-year Bible reading plan. I started it. I made it to like January 3rd. <laughs> I was doing good. Then stuff happened. Okay, great. Today's December 20th. What is it today, Daniel? 15th? Start on December 15th. Just pick it up at the end. It's in the book of Revelation. You'll love it. Scare the heebie-jeebies out of you. Do you see what the devil does? Though? He just works so hard. Oh, so you haven't talked to God in a while. You haven't prayed in a while. How dare you? How dare you? Look all he's done for you. This is what the devil does. And, and he makes you feel so bad that you don't want to go back and talk to God anymore. Because you think that he doesn't want you anymore because you left him for a while. But the truth is, he's been with you everywhere you've went. And he's never left you. And all he's been doing is eagerly awaiting for you to return to him. But what about when you really screw up? What about when you're really in the, in the midst of the hardest battle of your life? What about then? What about when you're, you've been unfaithful to a spouse? Or what about when you, you, you've said something you just should have never said about somebody and it got back to them? What about, what about when sickness, when serious sickness comes on your body? What, what about those times? What about the times where you feel like this is the battle for my very soul in this world? What about those times? Surely... Surely God's still not with me. What about the toughest times? What about the hard times? And that's number three. God is with you, especially in the tough times. Isaiah 41, 10, it begins with three words. We're going to say it together on three. One, two, three. Don't be afraid. Don't. Fear is the arch enemy of faith. It is the antithesis of faith. Faith is everything for a believer. We are saved through faith. Faith is the catalyst for everything that we do with God. And the devil wants you to be so afraid because fear drives faith out. And God is beginning Isaiah 41 verse 10 by saying, don't be afraid. Whatever you do, do not fear. Why can he say that? Why is he telling us? And why can we stand on it? He says, for I am with you. Yes. Don't be discouraged. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. This is the God who's never lost a fight. He's undefeated. 
the devil thought he beat him at the cross of Calvary. But three days later, the greatest victory the world has ever seen was won. And God has never lost, and he's telling you that he's going to hold you up with his victorious right hand. I just want to go back to that Zephaniah for a second and just picture this. Now let's bring it all together. This victorious God who's never lost a battle, who's holding you up with your right hand, is standing above you. He is rejoicing. He is shouting. He is singing loudly above you. He is loving the fear out of you. He is absolutely for you in every single way. When I think about God Almighty standing above me, dancing with joy in his heart about his son, about his daughter, my God, it makes me want to dance. I want, I'm just about to bust out in the Holy Ghost shuffle in about 30 seconds. Some of y'all don't know, know nothing about the Holy Ghost shuffle. God is with you. God is for you. Don't be afraid. And that brings us to one that we know well. Psalm 23, 4. Even though I walk. Through the valley of the shadow of death. What, what worse thing could you walk through in this life? Like what's the worst thing that you could walk through outside of the valley of the shadow of death? Like, I mean, for me, I picture this like the ocean. I only had one fear in my entire life, well, two. Heights, which the Marine Corps broke me of, and sharks. I was definitely afraid of sharks. I just thought for sure, if I'm ever, when I die, I'm going to get eaten by sharks just the way I'm going to go out. <laughs> when I was a city boy, I'd never been to the beach in my life, went to the Marine Corps, and that's all we do. Amphibious assault. So they took me out of the ocean, and first time in it, I'm like, oh, this ain't so bad, I can touch. Then you're out there for a while, and you're just floating, and then all of a sudden, the shoreline starts to slip away. You ever feel like that in life? Like, you felt like you had a grip on things, and all of a sudden, before you knew it, like five minutes later... The safety net is so far away. And I just remember sitting out there thinking, there's one or two things that's about to happen. Either A, Jaws is going to come and eat my legs off. <laughs> or B, I'm going to drown out here. And there's probably two no worse ways that I would prefer not to die. I, I, like, I don't want to experience death in that way. And so I start to swim with everything. Like, you'd be, a, you'd be amazed what that could do for the adrenaline in the body. Do you feel what I'm saying? Like... Jokers out there, Marines kicking me, like grabbing my foot like as a shark because they knew I was afraid. I'm, ah! Just, ah! just freaking screaming, swimming my tail off to get inside. And they're all laughing at me in the end. But hear this now. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The one thing, if anything, that you walk out of here today, I want you to walk out with a statement we're about to make together, and I want you to know that you know within the depths of your heart, no matter what life throws at you, no matter what the devil tries to lie to you about, no matter what others try to do against you, no matter how they treat you, you're going to know this today, and you're going to know it in this season, and it's going to lift you up. It's going to be wind in your sails. It's going to be encouragement. It's going to be faith against your fear. Everybody say it together. Four. That's right. God is with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. Do not fear. Do not faint. Do not grow weary. Because God is with you. Do you believe that? Can we give Jesus one big thank you for his word? I'm going just for a moment if we can bow our head and close our eyes. I want to extend an opportunity to each and every one that's here today. And before I do that, I just want you to understand the heartbeat of God. And that's simply this. He's for you. He's not against you. And if God be for you, then who can truly ever stand against you? Come on the winning side today. Come on the side of faith hope and love. Get rid of fear and doubt and hate. The only way to do that is to know God. And the only way to know God is through His Son, Jesus, who gave His life on the cross of Calvary as a ransom for yours. That if you would just say yes to Him, He will forgive you and wipe out every mistake, every sin you've ever done in your entire life. 
He'll give you a fresh start. That's His promise. That's His dedication to you. He forgives and He forgets. And He loves you like crazy. So if you want to say yes to Jesus, on the count of three, without fear, without worry, without delay, I'm going to ask you to lift your hand in the, high in the air. We're going to pray a prayer with you right there in your seat. Maybe you're here today and you've prayed a prayer like this before. But like me, when I was out in the ocean for the first few times, all of a sudden I started to get sucked out the sea a little bit. You feel like you've been drifting away and just come back. The beautiful thing is, is you don't have to do it out of fear. You get to do it out of love. So if that's you, and you want to say yes or recommit that yes on three, shoot that hand up nice and high in the air. One, two, three. Come on, put those hands up nice and high. Hands growing up all over. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So many hands up. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for those hands. For every one of you that raised that hand, just place it right in your heart. We're going to pray this prayer together. And I want everybody here that is making that decision, I want you just to speak it from the depths of your heart. And everyone else, let's join in and back them up. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. You are the Son of God. You gave your life for me. Now I give my life to you. Forgive me for every sin, every mistake I've ever made. Give me a fresh start, a new beginning. From this day forward, I dedicate my life to you. Help me. Send to me your Holy Spirit so I can live it for you. Amen.